Hello and welcome, a really warm welcome to our service of Holy Communion on this, the Sunday before Lent starts. On Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, um, we're going to make available to you a quiet day that I'm recording for Wycliffe for my chapel community in Oxford. I'm going to do a series of three meditations which will have some music and paintings and poetry in. Uh, one or two of my students will be helping me with that. So we'll make that available to you because we realise that we can't be together physically for the start of Lent, but there are things that we can do to mark the start of Lent together. So let's be quiet as we press pause for a moment and prepare our hearts and our minds. Let's be still before the Lord. And let's be thankful that he is unchanging and that he is always with us. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you. We're going to start by singing that wonderful hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy. So we continue our worship as we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly Father, Father, we have sinned, sinned against you and, and against, against our neighbour, neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so we have our first reading, which comes from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, beginning to read at verse 21. Very familiar words. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground 
Then he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens, who created all these. He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them forth each by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. And so we sing together, love divine or love's excelling. No. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. 
And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me, the door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Well, I was inspired, I think we were inspired by a service that we attended last Sunday, not in person, but online as we do. It was at Millmead Baptist Church where I used to be on the pastoral team there back in the 80s, and uh, we occasionally visit. It's a, a good place to be. And I was really challenged, particularly by the message of Ian Stackhouse, the senior pastor. He was actually preaching on this passage here, the same one that Sarah read out to us in Isaiah 40, and it reminded me of a sermon that I'd preached years ago on the last verse, verse 31. So I kind of revisited it during the week as I was thinking about what I should be saying today. And in that service at Milmead, near the end, there were a couple of responses from various people. One was the worship leader, and she shared with everybody that she'd been challenged by the sermon, but that she once was in a very dark place in her life. She didn't tell us what the details were, but she said it was very dark. And I, I didn't know which way to turn. And she said, I used to go out for walks along the street and looking in various windows along the road, people had put up pictures of rainbows and the sort of things that we often see around here in Quainton and Oving. And she said, I suddenly saw a picture in one window that I hadn't seen before. It was a picture of a lion. And next to the lion, there were the words in large letters in the window, Courage, dear heart. And she said, I stopped and, and looked at this window and I thought, I know those words. Because she was a fan of C.S. Lewis' Chronicles of Narnia. And of course the third book, as you probably know, uh, The Voyage of, of the Dawn Treader. <laughs> I love that film. <laughs> and do you know what? We were in Padstow a few years ago mm. and the replica of mm. the boat, the Dawn Treader, was in the harbour, was. wasn't it? Do you remember it was, that? yes. They'd had to put in because of bad weather. And uh, it was remarkable because, uh, I mean, it, it, you, as soon as you walked into the harbour, you yeah. recognised it. it was well, I think it was the film, the, 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 they used it in the film. Yeah, they did. For some of the shots. Because, yeah. of course, it was released not so long ago. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader. And, and as she looked at the window and saw these words, Courage, Dear Heart, it reminded her of the story. And, of course, Lucy and the children, um, they're, they're on the boat and they're heading into nowhere trying to find their friends and they head towards what they call the dark island and the closer they get to the island the more fearful they are and um, as they get closer it gets darker and darker they get more and more anxious and Reapy Cheap, the tiny mouse he's got lots of courage he's a, he might be a tiny mouse but he's got the heart of a lion and he says to them we're going to keep going into the darkness. We don't need to be afraid. But of course they were afraid. And they suddenly saw a man who was out in the sea. He was, he was swimming, trying to get away from the island. So they dragged him onto the boat. And the man said to, to them, run, run. Don't go near those shores. It's a very dark place. And so they turn the boat around and Lucy shouts to Aslan. She says, Aslan, Aslan, where are you? If you really love us, help us now. 
and suddenly she hears a voice and she knows it's the voice of Aslan. Courage, dear heart. Mm. And then the sunlight comes and the light is dawning and the darkness is dispelled. What a lovely picture that is. And of course the, the lady that recounted this story at Milnead, she said as she saw that picture and reminded her of the story, the darkness in her life began to go. And she saw again the sunlight of the love and the power of God. Fear for all of us and anxiety is big, bold, loud. It can intimidate us. It can cripple us. It can cripple us emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. And fear and anxiety is something that we've seen a lot of over this last year since that first lockdown in March last year. Many people have been afraid. And it's not just through the pandemic that we see fear and anxiety, but in our culture today and around the world, with the things that we see and experience, there's a lot of fear in the world today, and it can grip you. Its partner, anxiety, also puts us in prisons, and they can hold us in a very dark place. Even in our culture today and around us in our own villages here we meet many people who say that they're in a very dark place at this time because of the challenges that we face but we are created for so much more because God comes to us and he creates us potentially to move mountains to slay giants to live in love and peace and hope and in the abundant life that Jesus came to bring. That's what we're created for. We're not created to live in fear. We're created by a loving God who beat back everything worth being afraid of, including death. So we should not let fear and anxiety have the last word. We shouldn't have fear and anxiety giving us, making us, come in a place of darkness and live in a place of darkness because God comes to where we are and he shines his light into us. Courage, dear heart, when everything seems dark. Isaiah 40 is incredible because from verse 21 that Sarah read, God is reminding the people who are in captivity, he's reminding them, do you not know, can't you remember did he not hear? I am a great God. Can he not remember the things that I have done? Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. Then those remarkable words at the end of the chapter, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. There was another young woman in the service last Sunday at Milnead who came forward at the end. And she said a testimony. She said that she loves running and she's taken part in several London marathons. Remember that story that she told? Mm -hmm. But more recently, she was running in the London Marathon for a charity and leading up to the day, she was very fearful. She didn't feel well enough. She didn't feel confident enough. She lost some of her hope that she'd actually run these 26 miles. And so she took hold of this verse, verse 31, and she told us that she prayed through this verse every day. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And she prayed through those verses leading up to the race. And she got to the race. She wasn't feeling very well on the day. Still not very confident. And she ran for 22 miles. And she was going to give up. And then she heard someone out in the crowd. They shouted to her, Therese! You're absolutely flying. And of course that inspired her to continue the last four miles. Why am I feeling so emotional? 
it is. It's, it's emotional days, and it's um, it is. Yeah, it's deep. It's real. And I get I get emotional when I hear these stories because it's so real for us as well. Mm. When we're living in a dark situation, we feel that we can't go on anymore. Mm. Therese, you're absolutely flying, and that is what God wants to say to us. He says, "Courage, dear hearts, in a dark place." Mm. Remember all that I am, God says. Remember all that I've done. Remember all the history that declares the, the wonder-working power of God. Remember what God has done in our lives and demonstrated his love through the cross and resurrection. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he comes to us to take us out of a dark place into a place where his light shines. He comes to take us out of fear and anxiety that grips hold of us into a place where we see that God defeats our fears and the ultimate fear, the fear of death. The sermon that I preached a few years ago on this verse, I reversed the last three verses, flying, running and walking, and I went the other way, walking, running and flying. My sermon was this, God gives us strength for the normal things of life, for the walking, for the steady plod, plod, plod. Strength for the normal. He gives us strength for the exceptional. When we're running in our lives, it takes more effort. He gives us strength for the exceptional. But he also gives us strength for the impossible, the flying. We can't humanly do that, can we? We can run and we can walk. Well, I can't run very well, but I do try from time to time, usually chasing the dog. We can run and we can walk, but we can't fly, humanly speaking. That's where God's supernatural power comes in. When we're facing things that seem against the odds, God comes in and gives us the power that we need by his spirit to face all that life will throw at us. But, of course, there is a bit of a catch the catch is we need to trust him, we need to give our lives to him, we need to pray to him, we need to be intimate with him and allow him to come into our lives in a very intimate way by the power of his spirit. That's the catch. God wants a relationship with us. He wants us to discover his will for our lives and his purpose for our lives. And we can only do that as we submit ourselves into his hands. So may you hear... If you're in a dark place at the moment, words from God himself. Courage, dear heart. And if you feel tired and weary of all the things that's going on in, in life at the moment, may you hear the words, you're absolutely flying. Walking, strength for the normal. Running, strength for the exceptional. Flying strength for the impossible and as we fly we see earth from heaven's point of view that's the definition of God's wisdom in the Bible wisdom seeing earth from heaven's point of view everything suddenly takes on a new perspective when we see things from God's perspective and that's what he wants us to see today a big God wanting to do big great things in our lives so that we can have an impact on the world around. May that be so. Amen. Amen. Let's just be quiet for a moment as we let those words and thoughts and perhaps some of our emotions settle. Father, we thank you so much for that powerful reminder of who you are and how you work in our lives. And for those of us that needed to be reminded of those truths, those deep truths, in amongst the realities of our lives, we pray that you will enlighten our minds again and quicken our hearts, that we may receive all that you offer to us today. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. And so 
Let's affirm what we believe as Christians together in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. We're continuing with our Alpha course every Tuesday evening online. Uh, it's not too late to join us if you'd like to. On Tuesday of this week, we watched uh, Alpha 3. And uh, it, was a, it was incredible. I, actually haven't seen all of the videos myself, so I'm going through for the first time with everybody else. And during that video, there was a young man called Shane Taylor, who was a criminal. He was in prison several times. He was uh, arrested for knife crime and violent acts of crime with a gang. And he gave his story, his testimony. And I know that all of us who watched that were really touched by that testimony. So I thought it would, you would like to see it too. So here's Shane Taylor with his story. I got in with the wrong crowd and I started to um, pinch cars, burgle houses, uh, become known, me and my friends become known as very high profile thieves really. I used to carry big knives, uh, the, the big knives to the smaller knives down my waist. And I was the kind of person where if you pulled a knife out, I would use it. I ended up stabbing someone in the head. I ended up um, st stabbing someone, just missing his heart, and going through the top of his shoulder, uh, the, the top of his chest and his shoulder. Where he dropped to the floor, and so I was on the run for two attempted murders. And then I was just, when I went to prison, I had such a hatred for the system, and I couldn't handle being told what to do. Couldn't handle prison officers mucking me about. When I went out on association. I got to prison officer and I, uh, I stabbed them. And then this led to me going into maximum security prisons, being put on CSC, to where they feed you through a hatch in the door. There's no physical contact, so they have to have riot shields and riot gear on. Um, and that was my life for a long, long time, basically. And I, I just was going from prison to prison, prison to prison. But then I ended up going to Long Larton in Worcestershire. And when I was in there, I ended up going in an alpha course never heard of an alpha course didn't know anything and i just remember walking in because it sent me down i sat down on a chair and i thought oh no it's a christian thing and we'd just go there every week and i would argue and the pastor um i remember he come to me he said right i'm going to say a few scriptures first before we pray and one of them was no one's righteous not one we all fall short of the glory of god and then he said the verses about Jesus and explained a bit why he died on the cross for sinners and stuff. And then he said, pray. So I started praying and I said, uh, God, I said, God, if you're real, come into my life because I hate who I am. And nothing happened. But then as I was talking to the pastor, I started to feel this energy feeling in my stomach. And it started to raise up and raise up and raise up and raise up. And I just broke out into uncontrollable um, tears. And I just sobbed. <clears throat> and I just, 
right there. Because that was a change in my whole life. I knew God was real. Um, and no one will change that now. And then I remember <laughs> running on the wing. People clearly knew that I would become a Christian. So I actually helped them on another two Alpha courses. And then I, um, I got released. I've been in a prison where I... Because you would have thought that the prison where I stabbed the prison officers would have been the last prison to have me. But they were the first. That's how good works. The best thing for me is going in prisons and helping the lads in prison and, and trying to tell them about God. I've got five kids and then my life. Um, and what upsets me is because now I know um, that back then, if I had the kids, uh, they wouldn't have had a good upbringing. And now they sit on the night and have Bible studies with their dad. Um, <clears throat> have Bible studies with their dad. Have a life, they're beautiful. Um, and my life, is probably is my wife and my kids are the best gift that apart from the grace God's given me, is the best gift I've ever, he'll ever give me. Um, Didn't expect to cry like that. Recovered now. And perhaps that testimony gives us courage that God really does have an impact in this world. He does break in in power. And so with that in mind, let's turn to prayer and bring our intercessions to God. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much for Shane and his testimony. We thank you for the many stories that we hear and have heard over the ages, over the, over the years, that tell of the way that you break in to broken and desperate lives. Thank you so much that you are at work and we turn to you praying for our world and for our nation, for our community. We pray with great hope because we, we know that your power is at work, even when we feel weak and helpless. So Father, we want to pray for our world, which is so broken, and we think of some of the trouble spots and some of the things that have been happening in the news. We think of some of the natural disasters. We've seen floods, dams breaking in northern India, the situation in the USA. We think of the pandemic that continues to affect huge parts of our world. New areas going into lockdown in Australia this week and so much brokenness and strife. But Father, you are sovereign and you are the creator. And so we do pray with hope, believing that even now you are answering our prayers, bringing peace, bringing justice, bringing freedom. And for the many that we pray for, of whom we don't know their name, we know that you, that you know every single man, woman and child across this broken world of us. And we pray that by your spirit you'll draw close to those that need your presence at this moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And we pray for the church throughout the world. Your one church. Father, with all denominations brought together, all working for the same thing, all working to bring the gospel of peace. And we do ask for those that lead, and especially we think of our own denomination, the Anglican Communion, and we pray for our Archbishop, Justin Welby, at this time. We pray for wisdom and grace and discernment and love and compassion for all the decisions he has to make this week, that you'll uphold him and strengthen him. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for our nation, Father, we pray. <clears throat> we pray for our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, at this time, for Parliament, for the Cabinet, for our government, for all the decisions they have to make as we look around our world with our economic difficulties, with climate crisis, post-Brexit arrangements, and of course the pandemic. How we need your help, Father God, and we do pray that you will fill your 
ministers who have been chosen to lead this country with wisdom and grace at this time. And we especially pray for those uh, men and women who, who are Christians, uh, who those who are Christians in Parliament, we pray that you'll give them incredible courage to speak for the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for our own communities of Quainton and Oving and Pitchcut, we thank you so much for our churches that are precious to us. As church communities, we are disparate and and spread around at this time, unable to meet physically together. And yet, Father, you are at work in amongst us. And I pray that you'll give us a sense of closeness with you and with one another. Pray for opportunities that we may bump into one another and those in our community this week so that we can give words of encouragement and kindness. And we pray that your light will shine through with all that we do. And we do continue to pray for the Alpha Course. We pray for hearts to be opened and minds to be clear. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. prayer. And finally, for the sick, for those in our communities that struggle with sickness in mind or body or spirit, those only known to us and those that we can all consider in our prayers, especially we remember Geoffrey at this time, Geoffrey and Alison and the family, for your healing love to be poured out. And we continue to pray for Christopher Priddo. We ask more healing for him, Lord. And we name those silently in our hearts that we wish the Lord Jesus to stretch out his hand and heal. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And so we say, merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of, of your Son and our Saviour, Lord, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Now we come to that part of our service where we share the peace together. Um, we can't be together physically, but wherever you are at the moment, just remember those folk in your mind's eye. If you're on your own, uh, we're with you in spirit. And uh, we want to ask for God's peace to be with you too. And if you're with somebody, then share the peace with them. But bear in mind our church community and those that we love as we share the peace. Jesus stood among his disciples and he said, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share the peace. Peace be with you. We know that uh, our services are watched far and wide, not just in Quainton and Oving. So I'd like to ask you to share in our Holy Communion time together in a way that's appropriate for you. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You, you embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He, he opened, opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him, 
His body is the bread of life. After supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As, As we, we eat and drink, drink these holy gifts, make, make us one in Christ, our risen, risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. bread. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ, I am broken for you. Amen.
see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers at his table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty, Almighty God, God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your, of your Son, Son Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Through, through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send, Send us out, out in the power, power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. One of the benefits of um, being able to have our hymns and our services is that you can sing. We can't sing in church at the moment, but you can sing at home. So let's even stand. Take a deep breath. It's very good for you. And we'll sing that great hymn, And Can It Be? Amen. Uh -huh.
been a great service. Thank you for being with us today. Um, and of course, we're following the theme of running, walking, and flying. And uh, of course, as you know, Chariots of Fire was a very famous film by Eric Little, who was a champion runner. But he actually refused to run at a crucial race on a Sunday. It was on a Sunday he refused to race because as a Christian, he knew that on the Sabbath, as he called it, he should be in church and he wanted to honour God. So he gave up running at that crucial race so that he could be in church. And when he was in church on that Sunday, and it's recounted in the film, Eric Little read from Isaiah 40 the very words that we have read today. So I thought it would be really appropriate, after the blessing, to show you that clip from the film. It's very moving and it's very challenging because he went on to be a missionary, didn't he, Eric? Went to China. And he completely gave his life to God because he always put God first above everything else, even though he had a promising career as a runner and would have won many medals. He gave it up to serve God. What a challenge. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest with you and abide with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. My text this afternoon is taken from Isaiah, chapter 40. Behold, the nations are as a drop in the bucket and are counted as the small dust in the balance. All nations before him are as nothing. They are counted to him less than nothing. And vanity. He bringeth the princes to nothing. He maketh the judges of the earth as a vanity. Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? Juvenile! I know, Sam. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no strength, he increaseth might. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. <laughs>